A cheerful heart is good medicine, Proverbs 17.22. Hi, this is Robin again. I want to tell you more about being diagnosed and being treated for my parotid gland cancer. I want to tell you about the process of being diagnosed. Uh, about 30 years ago, I had uh, mono, and I had what I thought was a resulting swollen lymph node, which probably was. Um, and I just, it was on this side, and I just kind of ignored it. It stayed as a lump right under my uh, neckline, right in here. It just stayed there. It was a little sore to the touch, but I just left it alone because I thought it was just a swollen lymph node. I also, about that same time, started uh, experiencing a lot of TMJ problems in the same year. And um, the symptoms would come and go, but I knew what they were. There was just a couple of different types of pain. And about six months ago, I noticed that I was having a lot more what I thought TMJ pain, and I was getting new kinds of pain. It was happening every day, and it was happening 10, 12 times a day. So um, I decided, with the urging of uh, some wonderful people, to go see what this is and get this finally taken care of so I don't have that much kind of pain every day. So I uh, saw some TMJ doctors, and uh, I really started thinking about the type of pain and where it was, and I realized I felt like I had two different types of pain. One was that swollen lymph node, because it was so tender to the touch. And the second one was the different types of um, TMJ pain that I would have. So I decided to... Uh, go see an ENT to check out the what I thought was the swollen lymph node pain. He quickly told me after a CT and an MRI was performed that it was not a swollen lymph node, that it was my parotid gland and I actually had a tumor in there. He told uh, my husband and I that uh, parotid gland tumors are 80% uh, of them are benign, not to worry about cancer, and that uh, however I would need to have the tumor removed. Upon doing some research and talking with this doctor a little bit more, we realized that the parotid gland, which is your largest of your salivary glands, they're symmetrical on each side, um, was a very tricky uh, tumor to remove. Uh, the, the parotid gland is made up of two lobes. One is a superficial and it sits just below the skin. Then you have a facial nerve that goes up underneath it, and then the deep lobe is beneath it. My tumor was in the deep lobe, which meant that to get to it, they'd have to work around this facial nerve. Now, what we learned about the facial nerve is that it comes up, and it branches out like fingers, and it controls the movement of different parts of your face on one side. So um, we learned that if the parod, uh, excuse me, if the facial nerve were nicked or cut or mishandled, I could end up with permanent facial paralysis on that side of the face. So after doing a little research and investigating and asking around, uh, we decided to come to MD Anderson where uh, we believe they're world renowned for cancer treatment and surgeries even though we didn't believe it was cancer at the time. We felt like they would have the, the most types of uh, surgeries in front of them, like mine would need, that we'd have the most skilled surgeons. So we came and met our wonderful surgeon. She was very delightful. Uh, she ordered a fine needle biopsy, and um, that told us the diagnosis of the, that it was cancer, and it was a cancer called a cynic cell carcinoma. Now, as far as having a cancer in your parotid gland, that's probably the best one to have. It's uh, usually non-aggressive, very slow growing. It was a size, though, that I think put me in a category two, but of course it had not metastasized. So the surgeon set me up, and I had surgery on January the 14th, she removed the entire parotid gland. She said to my husband afterward that she made my facial nerve very angry. 
And then she went in underneath and removed the um, deep lobe where the cancer resided. Uh, when she made the, the kind of incision that you have with a parotid gland uh, tumor or cancer removal is, I'll turn sideways to kind of show you. They call it the um, facelift surgery because it starts up here. It's a very tiny little cut made down in front of your ear, and then it goes up underneath your ear, back just so slightly in a curve, and then she placed the rest of it down into uh, what well, she called a well-defined crease. I call it a big wrinkle. So uh, she pulls that back, and she went in there, and she removed it all, but she was not happy with the amount of margins that she was able to remove. She made a surgical decision, and I think she made a good one. Um, she could either have gone and had to scrape up against the facial nerve to get all of it, or decide to put me through some radiation. Um, the facial nerve being scraped could have, again, left me permanently paralyzed, and radiation is something that is not exciting to go through or endure, but you do come out on the other side of it, and you get to go on with your life. So I'm happy with the decision she made for me. Um, I was able then to recover. They took my stitches out five or six days later. They, she left a drain that was behind my scar that went back toward my neck um, and it just allowed any extra fluid buildup to drain out. That was removed a couple of days later, and uh, then my husband and I proceeded to go back home, and we waited to hear from the radiation oncologist to come out again for my radiation therapy. So um, that's it for now. I'll see you in the funny papers.